Chatteractcoach.com Quiz, what is this focal opacity and how do we remove it? Look at that spot there. So we'll do the capsular axis and just to the right of center, there's that round ovalish spot. And what is that? That's an important question. Is that just part of the cataract? Will that come out when we remove the nucleus? And does it look like a typical cataract change? And only here with this very strong red reflex do we notice it. In pre-op testing, it wasn't very obvious, but now we can certainly tell. This patient has a significant nuclear cataract, and that blocked our view in pre-op testing. Now watch carefully for hydrodissection, very carefully. Make sure the fluid waves, they go across. Let's, let's watch carefully. There's a fluid wave. So the fluid wave did pass nicely past that opacity. Now we'll lift the nucleus out of the capsular bag, did some hydrodelineation, more viscoelastic to protect the cornea, and we'll chop this nucleus. Now why do I tilt the nucleus out of the capsular bag? Well, I'll tell you, the patients had a prior pars plana vitrectomy for treatment of a retinal detachment. So we'll chop the nucleus, there it is, two halves created, separate the halves, go into that first half, chopper goes around, let's break off another quadrant, and we can emulsify these smaller pieces now. Yeah, the patient had a pars plana vitrectomy for treatment of retinal attachment, and that surgery went fine, and the patients anticipated to have good visual recovery from that. But of course, after vitrectomy, the patient developed this nuclear cataract. And now the patient's seeing me for this treatment. Now importantly, this patient has basically one good eye. The other eye is densely amblyopic since young childhood. And this is the patient's everything eye. Everything relies on this eye. The patient's also quite young. And so we need to be very careful. Tilting the nucleus out of the capsular bag takes away the stress on the capsule. Remember, there's no anterior hyaloid face here. And so there's no central support of the capsular bag or the nucleus. It's only supported by the zonular attachments. So by bringing the nucleus up out of the capsular bag, we minimize that stress. It's a fantastic technique for patients like this who've had a pars plana vitrectomy. Now, let's put the IA probe in the eye and watch carefully. We'll remove the cortex here, and we want to see that opacity. Can we remove it? So here's the IA probe, We're just adjusting the tip here. That looks great. Put that in the eye. Let's remove the cortex again, watching very carefully at the side of that opacity. There it is again. Now look back there. You see that opacity. We'll clean up the cortex nicely, polish the capsule bag, and again, we're watching very carefully for that one spot. There's that spot back there. And what do we do with it? Well, let's try. We can go down here and gently rub it. Use a little bit of gentle vacuum to try to remove it. Maybe is it a plaque? No. In fact, this spot is on the posterior side of the posterior capsule. It's on the back side of the posterior capsule. And likely this is just a side effect of the prior pars plana vitrectomy. Now the surgeon did a beautiful job in fixing the retina. Retina looks great, but this can be a spot where there's inadvertent touching of the posterior capsule by the vitrector. Now the capsule's fully intact, and we need to keep it that way. This patient's gonna get a toric lens. And so we'll fill our capsular bag here with viscoelastic, and we're gonna place our toric lens in the eye. We'll do some more polishing of that anterior capsule as well, but first let's get the eye well in the capsular bag. So here's our lens. We'll deliver that nice and slowly into the capsular bag. Here it goes. Now we'll use that chopper to line up the lens, place that inside the capsular bag, unfold the haptics here, and rotate it into position. There's a little bit of lens material on the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim, and we'll polish that off quite nicely. So look back there, there's that opacity that you see on the posterior capsule. Fortunately, it's out of the visual axis, we'll leave it alone. Let's go behind the eye well now to gently remove all the viscoelastic. That helps make sure that the toric lens stays in proper alignment during the post-op period. That looks great. And then what do we do about this opacity? Well, the answer is we're going to leave it alone. 
you know, I'll polish off the anterior rim and make sure everything looks just perfect and pristine. This patient's going to see beautifully. And that opacity is not in the center, so it's not in the visual axis. And so what we'll do is let this eye heal up for about three months. And then about three months after surgery, then we can have the patient get a YAG laser capsulotomy. And that's an easy procedure to do with a three-month mark. And that's a very safe procedure to do. Being aggressive now is not going to work because remember, our opacity is on the posterior side or the back side of the posterior capsule. You can't access it this way. So we could do something like a posterior capsulorexis, but that's a high-risk maneuver in a patient who's essentially monocular. Remember, it's otherwise densely amblyopic. So here we are at the end. That looks just beautiful. Let's seal up our incisions. You see a little bit of pigment there, too, on that posterior capsule, and that's from the dispersion of the retinal pigment epithelium at the time of fixing the retinal detachment. So here's the final outcome. It looks great, and patient is doing beautifully. Thanks for watching.